Seriously? Again? I grimaced at the phone rumble, turning over in my bed to look at the sleep clock cycle as I pulled the phone close to my face. 3.02 a.m. Cloudy outside. No breeze. Fucking Christ. I've barely slept. I live in a suburbia part of the town. We usually get drunken assets who forget to look for common identifiers of their homes and just ring their doorbells expecting a roommate, spouses or family member to let them in. Sometimes it's a prank spurred on by bored and or drunk teenagers during the spring break period. And occasionally, just every now and then, it's something else. My condo has a large set of steps going up to the property, wooden decking with various bits of furniture, including a hammock and some ornamental birds adorning it. My prized blue flamingo, Barry, sits just in view of the doorbell camera, trusty god if there ever was one. The reason I got the damn camera installed was because of Barry, funnily enough. I don't know if it was wildlife or some asshole, but someone pulled him from his perch and threw him onto the bushes in my yard, scratching at his paint and going for the eyes. I figured it may have been someone looking to case the area and try out a scene to see if I reacted, but I am a heavy sleeper most nights, so the camera was a good decision. Keeping one eye closed so I could go back to sleep after inspecting the camera, I flipped it open to the app. I have one of those Nest Hello cameras. They've got some crazy field of vision and work well in the daylight, even if the nighttime view on mine is, well, a little grainy at times. Some weird screen tearing happens around now when I look at the footage, no clue why. I look at the screen, and sure enough, nothing is out of place. The furniture is still there, a hammock is swinging, and Barry is staring dutifully at the door. I'm about to close the app and curse some weird glitch for waking me when it hits me, and my sleepy eye snaps open as I turn over to look clearly. There's no breeze out tonight. Then why is my hammock swinging? Furthermore, Barry's position to look out at the yard. I do his partly as aesthetic thing and symbolically, he's the guard of the house. So why is he looking at the camera? It unsettles me, even if he's just an inanimate object. I feel sympathy towards him as much as I do fear in this moment. This isn't special, of course. I packed bonded with my Roomba when I found out it's getting scared during thunderstorms. But the point remains that Barry could not move himself. Then who did? I close the app and take a moment to steady my nerves. I'd always been a nervous wreck at the best of times, and I didn't spend money on therapy to get past trauma for nothing. I grabbed my stuffed animal and rocked myself carefully until I could slow my breathing. There is a person at your front door. Fuck, no, 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 no. I bowled my hands into fists and smacked my temples an even number of times in frustration before I hold them down, tears in my eyes, breathe once more. I remind myself I am in control and take another tentative look at the app, feeling my skin crawl as it loads for an incessant amount of time, letting my mind wander once more. The camera looks out onto my driveway and the adjacent road. Directly opposite is the McPherson house and to the right of them is a small clearing into the woods surrounding our suburb. It's vast and thick. God knows why anyone would go in there. You could get lost for days, possibly permanently, if you like me and have a minimal sense of direction. I've spent so many nights afraid I'd wake up in there one day and struggle to get home, succumbing to the elements or encountering something in there that saw me as an easy meal. So when the app loads and I see something in the clearing, a long neck extending from a short body and pulling its way towards me. I don't even need to register it to have a knee-jerk reaction of throwing my phone to the floor and clenching my teeth. Enough is enough. I'm just being irrational, stupid, overthinking. It's just like everyone told me before. There wouldn't have been such a scene if I'd just... No, I'm not doing this, I tell myself. Soft moonlights ebbing in from the bedroom window situated on the opposite side of the condo. I am not doing this. I look at the app, still open, and stare hard at the shape of the screen, expecting a creature or a horrifying specter to appear. Nothing. The road is quiet, and there's nothing in the clearing, but Barry is still staring at me, 
and it's unsettling me more than I care to admit. I don't like things out of their place or positioned wrong. It just sets my teeth on edge, and I feel like pulling every follicle of hair off my body when I can't alter it. It's torture. I put on some clothes and sauntered downstairs, fiddling with the triple lock on my door and getting to the latch when I hear something that gives me pause. An ever so slight creak on the second step leading up to my condo. An older bit of wood that I intentionally left weaker. I'd love to say it was part of my master plan to catch a thief, but I just enjoyed the sound and, as I said, I hate messing with set things. Now, however, that sound was sending a chill down my spine, and a horrible thought creeped into my head. But if they moved it intentionally? I stepped back and carefully slid the locks back into place, watching my movements as I found a safe space to sit down in my living room, hoping not to make a sound. I waited a good 15 minutes in absolute silence, ears trained to the outside before I felt safe to move upstairs, my mind thinking back to the incident that set all of this off. How over a decade ago, someone started showing up at my workplace and kept telling me I was the most special person they'd ever met and that I had special genes. And they needed to know everything about me. They followed me incessantly wherever I went, knew all of my social media accounts, even the private ones, and made fresh alts the same hour I'd find and block the lost. Constantly spewing weird, prophetic shit about how I would be the most revered member of their club. I remember the night they broke into my parents' house, waking up to them standing over me in that weird fucking outfit, smile plastered all over their wrinkled and hairy face. I remember wondering why they were smiling as they drew a serrated knife across my thigh and pulled the blood into a small vial before dashing for the door as I screamed the house down. The guy was a well-known nutjob from the homeless community who preached about some church of the Duskwalker that he knew the all-seeing prophet, and the police had many run-ins with him, so they found him quick enough. He was sent to prison, and that was the end of it, for him at least. He took years of therapy and a new job in an entirely new city to placate me, and even now I struggle. All the defenses in the world can't seem to stop someone when they're obsessed. Walking back up the stairs, punching in the information to call the authorities, my phone notifies me once more. There is a person at your front door. With shaking hands, I open the app and I have to put my hand over my mouth to muffle the screams. It's him. He's older and malnourished, but it's absolutely him. Standing on the top of the stairs and leering at me, bent over and neck cocked to the side. But it's his neck. His fucking neck is too long. It's stretched out and there's veins all over it as it extends and pushed his head closer. Deadened eyes and a wide smile greet the camera as it gets closer. What do I do? What the fuck do I do? I run upstairs and pull the blankets over my head, phone still in my hand, and shakily try to dial 911. But I have no idea what they'll even do if I tell them what I've seen. The phone rings out for what feels like forever when I hear a thumping sound against my window. The unfettered moonlight casting a shadow on my blanket that scares my mind and shocks me into silence. His head is smacking against the window pane, either in an attempt to get my attention or, more likely, to get inside. Hands pull at the hairs on my head and I dig my face into my knees, begging for it all to stop with every ounce of willpower I can muster. I rock there, back and forth, for an age, just repeating the same thing over and over, almost in tandem with his bumps. Stop it. Go away. You are not welcome. It takes some time, but the bumping inexplicably stops, and I hear a snapping sound, followed by a low, desperate groan. I feel tears run down my face, and blood from where I'd bitten my lip, as I take in the intoxication of a silent night. There is a person at your front door. Fuck, this is the sign to break me. Shaking hands, open the app, and for the first time, I can't contain my scream. It's an eye, a single, bloodied eye with full dilation, jammed up against the camera. I can see something writhing in the darkness, twisting and dancing, 
beckoning to me, even as I shriek so loud that lights begin to come on at McPherson's house. Something in the blackness is calling to me, and a part of me wants to go to it. Every logical part of me feels unmitigated fear. My legs are shaking, my heart is pounding so fast that I feel dizzy as I stand, and I can barely hear anything in my ears. Yet, I still walk to the door, to whatever is calling me, eyes transfixed on the app as the strange shape beckons me. My hand slips off the first lock, the shape is no clearer, and yet I feel a familiarity with it. The contours in the eyes are almost inviting. The second lock clicks in release, and a rumble is audible in my ears. I feel comfort and warmth. I pull the chain on the latch, start to open the door to my calling as the elder MacPherson bellows at the top of his voice. Hey, who the fuck are you? Get away from there! You've got exactly three seconds! And a shot rings out that snaps me into consciousness. Hand still on the latch, but pulling open the door as a blackened hand slips back through the gap in the door. A horrific howling as it darts off for the tree line, more shots ringing out as I swing open the door, still on instinct. The second scream sounds familiar, and a hot, acidic substance pours down my shirt as my eyes blur and I fall to the ground. Mr. McPherson's wife coming to my aid. It's mine. My scream. My vomit. What was left on the doorbell was an intact eye, stalk and everything pushed up against the camera with some tape, black blood pooling on the ground, on the hammock and on Barry. A note had been stamped next to it, something that would force me to move once again and deny any strangeness that occurred that night. Maybe Sturgeon isn't the best town for me after all. I don't know what it is they see in me. But that question is more than enough to have me prepping to move once again. Do you see what I see?